If you love wine and you love food, but sometimes you're just a little confused or overwhelmed in how to bring them together, then this week's episode is perfect for you because I've put together three easy wine and food pairings for you to try so that you can see how the magic can happen when you bring a wine and a food together that create a beautiful synergy together. So if you're interested in learning three food and wine pairings that you can create easily at home, then let's dive in and get started on today's episode. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Wine Shop Talk. I'm your host, Somalia Aranozar, and I'm so happy that you're here with me today. If we haven't met before, it's lovely to have you here, and if we have, welcome back. Now, for those of you who are new, you should know that I've been a professional Somalia for almost 20 years now, and it's my passion and my privilege to make learning about wine not only fun and easy, but also practical, which means I want to ensure that you feel confident and comfortable when shopping for wines for any occasion, not just for fancy events, but for those everyday meals that you're looking to make memories with family and friends. Think of me as your very own go-to practical sommelier. In today's episode, I thought it'd be really fun to give you three food and wine pairings that you can try during this month. Now I'm filming this as we flip the page into November and these pairings do have a bit of a fall spin, but you can use them any time of year. And what I've done is I've done one cheese pairing, one savory food pairing, and of course a dessert pairing because we definitely need one of those. Could potentially do this as a collection in one meal, or you can try them independently. So it's gonna be up to you on how you use these pairings. I have selected wine styles and food styles that will be available around the globe. So I won't be naming specific brands in regards to the foods or the wines. I'll be giving you style ideas, which are gonna make it really easy for you to shop. I'm also gonna be giving you some terms to look for on the labels when you're shopping for wine so that it's gonna be really easy for you to pull these together. So our first pairing is a classic Spanish Spanish wine and cheese pairing, and this is the pairing of Manchego cheese and Rioja Reserva wine. And so let's break down why this pairing works and what you're looking for when you're shopping. The first thing you know about this pairing is let's talk about the cheese first. So Manchego cheese is, think of it like Spain's cheddar. It is a staple of everyday life in Spain. It is a sheep's milk cheese. It comes from the area of La Mancha, which when you look at the area of Spain is a big part in the center, if you will. And if you've read about Don Quixote, this is where he rode through and all of the windmills were there. Now, one of the best things about this cheese is its versatility, but it has some nice textures. You can find this cheese as very young cheese. But what I'm going to suggest is when you're shopping, you're going to look for Manchego cheese with at least a designation of six months or 12 months on the label. But if it doesn't say it, that's okay. But as you're shopping for cheese or if you're in the cheese shop, you're looking for a Manchego cheese that has a little bit of time under its belt, so to speak. Now, what can you expect if you haven't had a Manchego cheese before? This is a wonderful cheese. It's considered a semi-firm cheese, so it's super easy to cut. It's going to have a nice texture in your mouth. As it ages, you might get some of those little crystals that you'll feel in the texture. But this cheese, because of the sheep's milk, has a really nice earthiness to it. It's going to have some nuttiness. People will say they pull out some almonds. There's a savoriness and a salty bite to it as well. So it's really versatile. It goes with so many different foods. You can definitely enjoy this with white wines. You could do this with red wines, which is what we're going to do in regards to the Rioja Reserva. But think of it a bit like a Parmesan as well. That's kind of about the texture you're going to get. It can crumble as it gets older, but a younger one will cut more in the shape that you're cutting it. But as it ages, you will get into more crumbly styles of this cheese as well. But this is delicious. While it has a flavor, it's by no means so intense that it's gonna overpower anything, but it does have enough personality that it's not gonna get lost when you pair it up with wine. Now, let's talk about the wine and why these go together. The wine Rioja Reserva is made from Tepernillo from the Rioja area and the Reserva part on the label denotes the time of aging that has spent in barrel and this is locked in by law and the legal requirements are the Rioja Reserva needs to be aged for 12 months as a minimum with six months of that time being in barrel so it tells you a bit about the profile Tepernillo very versatile grape some people will equate it to a Pinot Noir you can have definitely some fruit in regards to cherries and raspberries but you're going to have a nice savory flavor that comes off of it as well, which is where this synergy between the cheese and a little bit of saltiness in the cheese and the savoriness of the wine really creates a really magical mouth-watering pairing for you to try. It's very earthy. It's not sort of 
in your face at all. They really come together almost like velvet or silk. It has a beautiful texture to it, but it's not overpowering. So Manchego with a Rioja Reserva, really beautiful pairing. This is a wonderful pairing for a Saturday afternoon where you're just munching or a bit before dinner. If you're looking for a late night snack, you know, you've been out for dinner early maybe and you just want a little bit of something, this is also a great idea. But the saltiness, some people will also pull out a little bit of almond, the bramble kind of herbs and some will say dustiness that comes out of the Rioja as well. Now, if you want to take it up a notch, you can definitely do a Rioja Gran Reserva, which means that the aging requirement has been increased from the Reserva. And the Gran Reserva must be aged for 24 months total with 12 of those months being in barrel. So again, they're locking in the style so that you know what to expect when you open it. That extra time in a barrel for the Grand Reserva, you're going to see this in the price point, but you're also going to feel that in the texture in your mouth, the aromatics and the wine. You're going to have more of those wood notes in regards to some vanilla, spice, flavors come through and the softness coming from the barrel. Now, if you are going to try a Grand Reserve of Rioja, I will definitely highly recommend that you go for the 12 month or higher Manchego cheese. And this being that as the wine increases in age, it increases in its complexity and its nuances, the older style of cheese is also going to have more layers for you to enjoy. So by bringing the older cheese with the older wine, you're going to experience both of them at their best. But it's going to be up to you, but definitely what you're looking for is to find the Manchego cheese, ideally six months or older, and the Reserva Rioja. And this is a beautiful pairing. I think if you have not already enjoyed this, it may quickly become one of your favorite go-to cheese pairings. So please let me know how you enjoy that pairing. Let's move on to pairing number two. Now for pairing number two, we're gonna do a soup. And as it's November, I'm gonna do a butternut squash soup. And I'm doing this because it's fall. This seems to be a staple soup. It's delicious. There's lots of fall squashes around that people are, are making delicious dishes for. And it brings in the conversation as well of, is wine and soup a redundant pairing? Do they cancel each other out? And we shouldn't even try to do any pairings with soup. Well, I am a believer that aside from ghost peppers and gum, we can pair with anything and I really enjoy a glass of wine with soup. But as always, you do you. If it's too much liquid, so to speak, and you just have a glass of water or sparkling water or something like that with your soup, continue doing you. But this pairing is really delicious. So you pick your favorite butternut squash soup recipe. You can put apple in it or not, or carrots is going to be up to you depending on the recipe. Maybe some pine nuts on top or roast Roasted almonds, depending on what the recipe again calls for. And the pairing I'm going to suggest here is a white wine pairing, and you have your choice. So I love to do a Vouvray here. So Vouvray is 100% Chenin Blanc from the Loire Valley in France, and it's going to bring some sweet apple and pear to the party. It's a nice medium to full bodied white. I think it's delicious. The other wine you can do here is to do a Viognier from a New World country. And what that means is you're going to look for Viognier on the label, but you're going to want to look for them from Australia or California, somewhere that is a warm climate and New World. The reason being is we do do Viognier in Old World countries, classically in France, but when we grow Viognier in France, we can get sometimes a bit of a more wet wool, more earthy flavor it comes from. And what I want you to pull out of the Viognier, and this is why I'm asking you to find one from a warm climate, is I want you to have some of those peach and apricot and stone fruit flavors that will come out of this grape variety when it's grown in more heat and sun. So both the Vouvray, which will give you those sweet apples and pears, you're gonna get a little peach in there as well, some honey. You're also gonna get more peach and stone fruit, apricots and honey in the Viognier. Both of those wines are going to really pull out the sweetness, the the lovely richness of the butternut squash soup. And it's a really nice pairing and it's fairly decadent. And the soup is very rich, as you know, and the nice acidity of both of these wines being medium weighted is a really nice balance of 
beautiful, savory, creamy soup with a nice, refreshing bit of almost bright fruit on top. So you have a bit of a mix and it's a beautiful pairing to try. So please let me know when you try that one and which wine you chose. And I'm interested to see what you think. Now, if you want to do something fun, you could definitely try the wine side by side. Very often we don't do a comparative tasting when we're having a meal. We have one glass of wine and that's all we have. But if you wanted to do a side-by-side -side wine here, you could definitely do a glass of Viognier and a glass of Vouvray or Chenin Blanc and see which one you enjoy. Now, a very classic pairing here is also to do a full-bodied Chardonnay. Again, bringing that creaminess, which is really lovely, but I really like that extra lift of tropical and stone fruits that both the Viognier or the Chenin Blanc or the Vouvray bring to the meal. So that's why I'm suggesting those two wines as the pairing. Now let's move on to dessert and this is one of my favorite pairings and for this pairing you're gonna leave the wine aisle and you're gonna walk on over into the beer aisle and this is nice dark chocolate brownie and you can make this super easy and just pick up a bag of one bite brownies those are so easy or like a fudgio type of cookie um, what you're looking for is like a dense dark chocolate cookie or a dense dark chocolate cake something that has some weight to it and also the bitterness of the dark chocolate and the pairing I'm suggesting here is to do a lambic beer so this is a Belgian style beer and it's called a creek so k-r- I-E-K, and this is going to be found in the Belgium beer area, depending if the beer section where you're shopping is broken down. And when you find the Belgian Creek beers, what you're going to be looking for is black cherry or raspberry. These are going to bring beautiful fresh fruit flavors to this pairing. And what's so special, if you have not had a Creek style beer before, it's a dry style beer, so Belgium beer, and Lambic is a special type of yeast, actually. It's a special type of fermentation we use, and and then to create these beers, we literally pour fresh fruit into them. So the spritz, the very fine bubbles that are created when we make the beer fermentation is delicious. But when we put the fruit on top of this, this becomes truly magical. So this is a pairing you must try. And then rarely will I ever tell you what you must do. But if you have not tried a Lambic beer style with dark chocolate cookies, cakes, or brownies, this is something you must put on your radar if you are a chocolate fan. And again, the black cherry one, I adore. Raspberry is delicious as well, but you're gonna get this fresh fruit flavor with the beautiful effervescence of the beer and this fruit flavor with the chocolate. It's truly magical. It really, really is. And it's perfect for the fall. And you'll find, depending, creeks can come and go sometimes in regards to availability. So sometimes you may see different fruit flavors mixed in. There's a peach one that's delicious with a crumble or any peach flavored dessert or peach compote with baked brie, for example. But definitely you want to try, take a walk over into the beer aisle. You're looking for a Belgium Creek. Definitely the people at the wine store can help you out if you can't find it. And this is worth the search. Now, if they don't have any right now, you can definitely do a cherry porter here as well. So that cherry, dark cherry flavor with the dark coffee flavored beer coming through with the dark chocolate brownies or cake or cookies. It's divine. So Really delicious pairing, but on a cool fall night going into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's a pretty nice way to spend an evening. I'm not gonna lie. So let's recap the three different pairings that we talked about today. So our first one was the Spanish cheese and wine pairing. So you're looking for Manchego cheese with a Rioja Reserva wine. So that was our first one. The second one, we talked about doing a beautiful butternut squash soup with either a Vouvray, 100% Chenin Blanc, or a beautiful Viognier from a new world country. And then we were just talking about finding the Belgium Creek beer, either black cherry or the raspberry, maybe labeled as framboise on the label, and beautiful dark chocolate brownies, cookies or cakes, but the brownie is definitely a go-to for me. So I hope that you have enjoyed the pairings today. I wanna hear how you enjoy them. So please, as you try them, please leave comments below if you're watching on YouTube or find me on TikTok and Instagram. Be sure to follow over there as well because I have lots of different pairing ideas and short quick tips on our social media channels for Wine Girl Academy. I wanna thank you as always for spending time with me today. Day, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. New episodes come out every Tuesday. I want to wish you a wonderful week. Cheers to you. Bye now.